The Switch has been around for a while now, close to closing in on like eight years. But there have been so many games. Nintendo's released like 77 games on the Switch themselves that they've made from their first party studios. And not all of them are good. You know, out of 77, one of them has to be bad. But something that we all have forgotten about is that, you know, we could easily forget about these games. Some of these games we might not even remember even coming out. Like, the first game on this list, ARMS. When was the last time you heard anybody talk about ARMS? It was Nintendo's, one of the early games for the Switch, and it was fun, you know? It was the one of the first games to really show off what the Joy-Cons can do in terms of motion controls, and it was a good idea and concept. But Nintendo really didn't do anything with this. They didn't introduce an ARMS character into Smash Brothers, which would have made perfect sense to me. But no, they chose Inkling. What? So, but like, out of all the games that Nintendo sort of dropped all support for, I think ARMS could have actually been successful. Like, I felt like there could have been a scene for this in terms of competitive play. It would have been super interesting to see how Nintendo could have developed this further. But... After the, it came out, you know, and a few months have gone by, I heard nothing about it. And to this day, the last time I heard anybody talk about it whatsoever was on the Yard podcast when Tommy in it for some reason DM'd Ludwig and just like, you were playing ARMS? It's like, what the heck? Like, who plays ARMS still? Seriously. I love, if leave a comment down below if you still play ARMS. One of Nintendo's bad habits when it comes to their sports games is, especially on the Switch, releasing them a little bit half-baked. Mario Tennis Aces was actually one of the first sports games that really came back on the Switch. It is a game that I actually really liked. But ever since the year it came out, and all the final like free DLC updates came to it, which, in my opinion, are stupid they should just come out with the game you shouldn't release your game half-baked and patch it with a bunch of free updates later and say oh look we did a bunch of fun stuff nintendo has a horrible habit of doing that especially with their sports games but specifically tennis aces is the best sports game that they've done so far involving mario but it it still has nothing the matches are so boring the maps are lifeless it's the same stuff over and over again it does have a story which is interesting which you don't see often with these nintendo sports games it has a campaign but you don't really get invested it's just kind of boring there was just no depth to it so it was just so disappointing and once all the free dlc came out it just sort of faded from everybody's consciousness. Weird that Nintendo just continues and continues to just let their sports games die. Like, when was the last time anybody played Mario Strikers? Like, seriously. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. The next game Nintendo released that everybody forgot about Mario 99, which some of you actually might remember having quite a bit of fond memories of this. But it's just a shame you can't play it anymore. This game came out originally for the Mario 35th anniversary, alongside the you know 3D Mario All-Stars collection. So this game was actually fairly popular, and Nintendo decided to have it timed exclusiveness to this game that baffled us all. Once it hit, like, March of the following year, the game would be deleted, and nobody can play it ever again. And I, I was always baffled by this, because it's such a good idea and concept. It was actually very popular, more popular than the other two 99 games that they've done to that point, but which being Pac-Man 99 and Tetris 99, which I like Tetris 99, but I didn't really play it after that first, like, weekend it came out. But Mario 99, I came back to fairly regularly, but once that sort of a date passed and the game deleted itself and nobody could play it ever again, it seemed like it just evaporated out of everybody's memory, except those who played it die hard. So it's really sad to say that this is one of the best fucking Mario games that Nintendo's made, but 
it just is gone now. You can't play it anymore. You might be able to play it on an emulator, but I never thought about that until right now as I'm recording this voiceover. I don't know how that would work, but it would be super interesting to see how that would work. Because you know Nintendo's never bringing this game back unless there's some sort of an anniversary or something. The next game is not necessarily forgotten because it's still fairly popular in like the fighting game scene, but Pokemon Tournament DX originally came out on the Wii U, then got like a sort of deluxe edition that came to the Switch. And it came out uh, during the first year of the Switch too. So it was actually sort of played a lot more than it probably would have if it, you know, didn't come out when it did. But since then, and truly getting overshadowed by so many other fighting games that came to Switch since then, I don't really hear a lot of people talk about this anymore. Because I feel like, Ever since this game came out, only more and more and better games have come out that sort of capture that casual fighting game audience much better than this sort of Tekken style, more technical fighting game did. So all the casual players that were playing this immediately switched to Smash Brothers once that came out a few years later. So unfortunately, this game didn't necessarily die or be forgotten by, you know, a lot of popular dired players, but it was forgotten by the general public, and they, sadly, most of them haven't ever come back to this again by the sheer fact of, why would you when you could play Smash Brothers or play one of the other 50 bajillion fighting games on the Switch? The last game that I'm going to be talking about isn't necessarily just a game. It's a game you can build. Nintendo Labo was a very interesting idea and concept, and would later get a bunch of different, you know, cardboard additions to it. The whole idea of Labo was build things in person to play games in a unique way. And it was super creative, and I loved it in concept. But it ended up being super tedious to build the stuff. The games were fun for about 20 minutes, and then you would put these cardboard things away in your closet, and you'll never see them again. And last time Nintendo released a Labo, I believe it was the VR one, or maybe the Mech Robot one, and they were even more underwhelming. The VR one was really interesting because you were able to play games like Odyssey and Breath of the Wild in VR. But then after building it, I realized this is just a Google Cardboard. And that's when I realized it was so dumb. And 90% of what the time spent playing with Labo is just building the stuff. I think the most interesting one was the piano, but that barely worked. So it's a cool idea and concept. It's awesome for kids. But as an adult, you kind of realize I'm playing with cardboard. What am I doing? What are some other forgotten Nintendo games? I'd love to hear your comments down below. I thought about introducing a game called Troll and I, but that was just a really bad game, not necessarily ever popular at the time, but it was just so bad, and everybody had already forgotten about it that I thought about maybe putting it on the list, but I don't know. I would love to hear what games you guys would have put on this list. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.